welcome to Come Home in My Kitchen Blue Satorial. I'm Delta Lou. Today we're going to be analyzing and discussing the theory associated with this song, the techniques, the tunings, and the procedures in learning and analyzing this song. So first and foremost in playing a song like this, this is a slide piece done in open G tuning, Spanish tuning, a very common tuning used in Delta Blues music, especially with Robert Johnson's repertoire. Uh, first and foremost, uh, playing this kind of music, I highly recommend utilizing a resophonic guitar like the one that I have here, but if you don't have one, that's quite alright. Any guitar will do for this matter. An acoustic guitar is fine, even an electric whatever is at your disposal. The kinds of accessories that I highly recommend with playing Robert Johnson's music is a brass slide. I like to use brass slides with resophonic guitars because it's able to exemplify and give the sound more of a dimension when you play it and it's very uh, comparable to what you hear on the LP. I also like to utilize plastic finger picks one for the thumb and one for the index finger. Plastic finger picks are easier on your hands and they don't scratch and, and tear the face of the guitar as you play. And also the last thing that I highly recommend for you to use is a capo. And this, is, this will come in handy as you study Robert Johnson's music because Robert Johnson liked to play in very high keys so he would be playing in a default of a open G tuning but he would be playing four pitches up so that would mean that he would be playing at, a, at about the A sharp he would be playing in the key of A sharp and I, you, in order to match the sound you would have to use a capo to ultimately play along with what Robert Johnson is playing in the LP a capo will will make you in unison as far as tone and pitch is concerned uh, trying to tune up the guitar to what Robert Johnson is playing in the LP will probably cause your strings to break and that's why I highly recommend utilizing a capo as you study the material so nonetheless in studying this song, Come Home in My Kitchen Blues, we're going to be playing at a default open G tuning, meaning that my top string is going to be tuned to a D note, and we're going to uh, tune up to each other by matching up our tones and pitches. So this is my top string. Let's tune to each other. This is my top D string. Next string is the uh, my f fifth string. This is going to be a G. The next string is going to be a D string. My third string is going to be a G string. My second string is going to be a B string. And finally, my bottom string, the last string, is going to be a D string. And all together is going to sound like this. In order to play it along, if you want to play along with exactly what is being heard on the LP, the original recording, you would take your capo and place it over the third fret, meaning that we've gone from G, G sharp, A, and now we're at A sharp, or what would be B flat. So it would be open G tuning with the capo on the third fret, and now you will be in unison and in the same tone and pitch as what Robert Johnson is playing. 
but for learning purposes, we're not going to utilize the capo for this moment. We're just going to play with the regular open G tuning arrangement so that you can understand, uh, so you can better get a feel for the neck board at its standard default positioning. And uh, we're going to proceed here. Come On In My Kitchen is also in the same family as Crossroad Blues, uh, Walking Blues, and Stones In My Pathway Blues, all utilizing the same tuning concepts. But this is more in the family of Crossroad Blues and Walking Blues. So they utilize kind of the same concepts. Now to begin, before we proceed with the, uh, the lesson, I would like to talk about positioning of the right hand. Delta Blues music does, doesn't necessarily utilize rolling finger picking motions, but it, it really emphasizes the dead thumb technique, which is really unique to the Delta Blues region. And dead thumb means that you're playing a monotonic bass note accompaniment that pulsates throughout the whole song. It's providing you with a bass accompaniment as you play individualized licks. So the bass is always going to be remain consistent. And it's going to be re remaining consistent throughout the song and I'm going to express more, I'm going to emphasize more the importance that that playing the monotonic bass note, how it will come in handy into playing this song as the lesson proceeds further on. <clears throat> but in doing so, the right hand arrangement should look a lot like this. You'll have your right hand draped over like this. Your, your hand is going to reach diagonally across the face in, in the middle of the neck and the bridge here, your hand is going to be positioned like this. So you're doing like this, like shadow puppet, and it's going to be plopped right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to position the palm of your right hand, the palm right here, the outside lining of your palm is going to be gently resting, hovering above the sixth string and it's going to gently damp position itself like this your hand is going to be looking like this your thumb is going to be free sitting atop on top of the sixth string you you gently dampen over the sixth string with your thumb free to either play individual notes on the sixth or fifth string component. And with, it, with that respect, with that being aligned tuning, your thumb is free to hover on top of the sixth or fifth string. Your index finger is going to be playing individualized single notes found on the treble strings, namely the first, second, third, and fourth strings. And there's going to be this relationship, this this component, this relationship of a pitching motion with the thumb and the index finger are going to be playing licks and uh, phrases with the slide in agreement to each other, pinching together pr to produce this dynamic sliding component and sound. And what, what's going to be happening is that the, the thumb, which is going to be free, with your hand resting like this, is going to be pulsating this dead thumb technique. And it's also, it also means that you're going to be kind of palm muting just the fifth string, creating like a, almost a muffled sound. This is what is called the dead thumb technique. And it sounds like this. He's only playing on the fifth string, and this is this very crucial bass accompaniment, bass accompaniment found in this kind of style of Delta Blues music, the dead thumb. And with your thumb pulsating the the note like that, your index fingers are free to pick out individual strings found on the twelfth fret, for example, or things that you will be sliding over.
imperative that the thumb keeps you in rhythm because that's the one thing that concentration that needs to be mastered in this music is playing the thumb accordingly playing the thumb technique accordingly I should say so it's imperative that you do get this positioning down and when we're going to be playing over in the, t the 12 fret the index finger is going to be picking, plucking out these individual strings as you slide over them. So playing on the second string. And your, your thumb and index finger are going to be playing simultaneously. You know, something in that, in that kind of pattern. But again, the thumb always going to be positioned on the 6th and 5th strings, and the thumb is always going to be pulsating the 5th string. And uh, as far as sliding techniques, what you want to do with the sliding, let's say, for example, the 12th fret, you want to create these kind of gentle, gentle dabbing over the 12th fret. You don't want to press too hard, but you do want to create a little bit of the tension so the strings can ring out accordingly. Use finesse and don't press aggressively and too hard when you're creating these sliding motions. And that's something that I'll go over as we cover the main components and sections of this song. Let's take a break. Okay, now we're going to be talking about the introduction of the song which is going to be utilizing main, uh, a lot of the main components of the predominant licks that are used uh, which are a majority of them will be on the 12th fret and the introduction is going to sound like this one, two, three, four today. <clears throat> so ultimately that first introduction is a uh, is ultimately two kinds of measures and it first kicks off like this. This first measure with your right hand positioned as such your thumb is going to be hovering over the fifth string and your index finger is going to be picking out individual strings on the first, second, and third strings. And, uh, and with, that, with that in mind, the right hand positioning, you're going to be playing this first lick, which will sound like this. Okay. And what you want to do in this introduction is you want to kick off, you want to lead into this lick, by playing this pulsating bass note, the fifth string playing one. Like that. You want to lead into it like that. So when you play that, you'll gradually lead into this 12th fret. And it's going to sound like this. Basically, it's a combination of four notes all together. With your thumb being positioned over the fifth string on the right hand like this, your index finger is going to be picking out the individual strings as you make your slide. You're going to locate the 12th fret with your slide. You're going to be hovering over the fourth, third, second, and first strings like this with your slide, just hovering over it like this and with your index finger you're going to be playing simultaneously this first note which is going to be on the second string 12th fret second string 12th fret your index finger is going to pick it out and your thumb is going to play the fifth string bass note open and you're going to play it together like this Da 
press the first note of that measure and then the next three notes are going to be on the are going to be played on the first string 12th fret but you're going to slide you're going to play the first and second strings together but the but you're going to strike it from the first string so I'll play this this whole phrase for example together so that first note is this on the second string and then the next three notes are going to be with the index finger three upstrokes from the starting from the first string and playing the second string so one two And the slide is going back and forth, covering the entire 12th fret from the start of that fret to the uh, second part of that fret. One, two, three, four. And the thumb is playing simultaneously over what you're playing on the bottom treble strings on the first and second strings on the 12th fret. One, two, three, four is the start of that phrase. So all together from the introduction, introduction is going to sound like this. One, two, three, four. And that's pretty simple there. So we've covered that concept. One, two, three, four. And we're going to go to this next phrase. So I'll play it, the whole thing out here shortly. So it's like this. From the beginning. One, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven. So after that, we've covered that first phrase. One, two, three, four. He goes back to his pulsating bass note. And then the second phrase is going to sound like this. And there are going to be four notes in all. This time you're starting on the second string 12th fret. Your slide is hovering over the 12th fret. So that first note will be the second string. The second note is going to be the bottom string. The third note is going to be the second string, and then you're going to resolve on the third string 12th fret. One, two, three, four. It's like an appreggio on the 12th fret. Very simple. And in those first two measures, he's going to be repeating those same ideas throughout the remainder of the song. So, so all together from the beginning, the start of this introduction, we'll start it off like this, slow. One, two, three, four. Pretty simple. Pretty simple and straightforward. So after he plays this... He plays a brief open chord. One, two, three, four. It's like a brief series of maybe two open chord strikes before he leads into this turnaround. And that's how the whole introduction is gonna uh, sound like. So, again, I'll lead it off again. And we're going to cover that here shortly. So in this uh, in this 12th fret on the uh, on the second measure here he plays kind of two brief open chords. And then he goes into this turnaround. Which is a very 
typical Robert Johnson turnaround, which also features in his other songs in the same family of tunings. But uh, in this way, what you're going to do after you play these brief open chords, you're going to locate, you're going to be fingering, your index finger is going to be on the top string on the third fret, your middle finger is going to be on the fourth string on the third fret. strokes with your thumb. So you're going to play four notes there. One, two, three. Three, three uh, strikes for this positioning. Then you're going to slide over to the second fret maintaining the same fingering. Again playing three notes sliding over to the first fret, maintaining the same fingering position. And then you're going to end it playing open strings, open chord after that. So all together it'll sound like this. A very simple concept that features in the introduction. So after he plays this turnaround, he plays this lick right after that. And basically what it is is locate, locating the third fret, the uh, fifth string.